Everybody knows TikTok. It's an app from China, basically just people dancing, but it has become one of the social media giants. Just to give a little bit of an overview, TikTok is owned by a company called ByteDance. The ultimate holding company of ByteDance is in the Cayman Islands, but it's mostly operating in China. So it is a Chinese company. There are two versions of the app. There's TikTok, this is the international version, and there's Douyin, which is basically the Chinese version. There have been many talks of banning TikTok because of privacy concerns or what happens to the data. And some countries like India have fully blocked TikTok, while other countries have banned the app on and off in the past. What is interesting is that TikTok had to pay 92 million to settle a class action lawsuit in February in 2021 from the US because they sent private data to China and they made accounts for users without their permission. And in the most recent development, TikTok has sent an official letter to US senators explaining what is happening to the data. So I want to do two things. I want to look at an interview with the CEO explaining what happens to the data and then look at the letter they actually sent in July 2022 to the senators explaining what is actually happening to the data. Okay, here he is looking all charming. So this is the CEO of TikTok. All right, so let me ask you about uh, TikTok and regulation. Um, under President Trump, there was a concern that certain information that TikTok was getting from people uh, using TikTok was somehow going to be uh, detrimental to the United States. And there was an effort to force TikTok to sell its U.S. business. Uh, what happened to that effort? We believe that our approach to all the governments and regulators around the world is to... He is the Chinese Mark Zuckerberg. It's actually hilarious that he's looking straight at the camera. I don't know why he's looking straight at the camera. This is actually really weird. He has a very measured way of talking. You know, if you hear Mark Zuckerberg talking, it's always the same thing where he says, all right, thank you. This is a great question. We actually have a team. And then he, he goes on. So he kind of has this weird way of talking, which is very PR. It's like this layer of inhumane PR between you and the person. So you can never really get the true statements. I mean, in this environment, you kind of have to do that to a high degree because if you're a CEO who's very authentic, who doesn't filter, this person's going to be heavily scrutinized. So this is corporate talk, right? You have to do it. You can't be controversial. You can't be canceled. You can't be in the news all the time. So it is weird, but blame media companies for incentivizing people to be like that. To be collaborative and to be very transparent, uh, to be available to explain what we do and who we are and answer any questions that they have. That's the approach we have taken. And uh, that approach has been an approach that has been very beneficial for us over the course of the last few years. This is so funny. So he basically says that, yes, we are answering any question that people might have, but he kind of didn't really answer the question about banning, right? He was asked, hey, there was this whole conversation banning this company unless they sell to a US company, right? Microsoft buys TikTok and then it's fine. As long as it's owned by a Chinese company, it's not okay. So the question was that, and then he answers in a very corporate speak, but obviously didn't answer the question, even though he said that we start answering questions. But I can't blame him for that. This is what you have to do. Blame media companies. There was a proposal, one point that require you to sell the TikTok uh, business in the US. I think it was going to be sold perhaps to uh, Larry Ellison's company, Oracle. Is that off the table now? And right now, you are not being forced to sell anything. Is that right? We have moved beyond that conversation. At this point. Okay. And the current administration. Thank you to David Rubenstein to actually ask the same question twice. I say it so many times, but in an interview, it's really rare that an interviewer asks the same question twice, but he did it. He asked the same question twice. He's a really good interviewer. And also the CEO of TikTok, he could have given a dumb answer, but he just plainly said, we have moved beyond this. So this was a straight answer, straight question. They're actually both doing well. The Biden administration, have they picked up the cudgels and said, well, we want to engage in the same fight or right now you don't have to worry about that again uh, we are taking the approach now to be very transparent to be very engaged very collaborative i was just complimenting him and now he comes back with the pr talk we're very engaged we're very collaborative this is my youtube channel i'm going to be very engaged very collaborative and to answer any questions they, that they may have okay but the like a robot he said the exact same thing okay i shouldn't have complimented him biggest concern that people had or at least some people in the trump administration had and maybe other people is that the data that you have on your computers about who's watching what i presume the data you have would somehow get fed back to china and china would have it for its use the chinese government is that true that your data is subject to being uh, given to or you're forced to give it to the chinese government we disagree with that 
This is straight out of the playbook of Mark Zuckerberg. Just this sentence, we disagree with that. This is exactly how I would say it. But interesting question, because this is a tricky one, right? So let's see how he answers before I get into the letter that I said to the senator. The way TikTok is set up today, first of all, TikTok is not available for download in China. It operates outside of China. The, datas, the data for TikTok users are, uh, is stored in Virginia. It's relevant to say that TikTok doesn't operate in China, but it's also kind of deceptive because it sounds like nobody from China is involved in TikTok as well, but this is not the case. I'm going to get to that in a bit. But again, it's really hard for me to criticize someone to have this corporate speak because they are literally forced to be like that. You can't be very outspoken. Look at Elon Musk, he gets so much scrutiny and he just says whatever he wants, right? And even he is probably filtering. So I'm gonna point it out, but I can't really be critical of him. And in Singapore, with the backup in Singapore. Uh, and we believe that we have a very rigorous and robust system to protect the data security of our users. Classic. This is a classic move. If someone asks you about how are you handling the data, right? Or is the data going to China or whatever? Switch the conversation. And I said it on the Enron video. If you want to change the conversation, move to something that is close enough. He changed the question. The question was, is the data going to China? Which would be a security concern because we don't want our data to be in China, right? This was the question. Data going to China, security concern for us, right? And he changed the conversation to data going to China because we want to make sure that the data doesn't leak, which is a different thing. It's not about leaking the data. It's about a country like China having data of, let's say, US citizens. But he slowly navigated the conversation there just to end up saying, yes, the data is secure, which wasn't the question. The question is, is the data in China? And do Chinese people or people who are located in China have access to that data? Do with the data. So let's suppose I go on TikTok and I like certain kinds of things to watch. You presumably can, and your algorithms know that. What do you do with that data? Do you sell it to another company or do you do nothing with it? It is our recommendation engine. The best way to think about it is that it's just pure mathematics. It's, it, it, it digests the behavior that our users. Okay, this is actually a pretty easy question because of course they're gonna use the data to feed the algorithm, but now we're away from the data concerns. Okay, as you can see here, this letter was sent on June 30th to different US senators, you can see their names. So this is basically an explanation of what are they doing with the data, data concerns and so on. Of course, they talk a lot about yes, 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 all the US data is gonna be now stored in the US, they're working with Oracle, and they talk about two main things. Number one is all the non-public US data is going to be in the US and used on the cloud in the US, and the backups are going to be in Singapore. It's kind of interesting that they chose Singapore to store all of the US data. I mean, let's say for example, Japan or Korea would also be kind of nearby to China. They could have used it. Maybe there's a different business infrastructure, but South Korea and Japan, they have an excellent business infrastructure as well. Singapore doesn't have a US military base, while Japan and South Korea do have a US military base. So this might be a deliberate attempt actually to picking the country that doesn't have a US presence. So this is kind of interesting, but maybe not. Maybe it's just the best location for a Chinese company to have a subsidiary set up. What I find interesting is how explicitly they say that if the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, is going to ask us for data, we're going to refuse even if they ask. In what reality could a company that is basically operating in China, I know Cayman Islands, but then if you go down subsidiary, subsidiary, most of what the company does is in China and they have a lot of employees in China, not TikTok specifically, they have some Chinese employees or let's say freelancers or whatever, but all of this is kind of concentrated in China. So in what reality could they refuse the Chinese Communist Communist Party. There's no way they could refuse. But the fact that they're saying that, I don't see this as being realistic at all. If this was a company, let's just assume TikTok is an independent company, right? If TikTok was a completely independent company, it wouldn't have a parent company, it would just be a single company operating outside of China, right? Even then, would it be very unlikely that they could refuse if they have Chinese employees? Because as long as they have employees who are actually Chinese or located in China, they could always strong arm the people who are there, right? There's no way they could refuse that. So could this be true? Yes, it could be true. Do I find this extremely unlikely? Yes, I find it very unlikely. I don't think that they could refuse. They have too many ties to China, even as the entity called TikTok or the multiple entities called TikTok that are not based in China, even then they have way too many ties to China. And if you look further, because ByteDance is the parent company, right? So it's a little complicated because there's multiple companies called TikTok, there's multiple ByteDance and so on. But you can see that they 
they are involved, right? ByteDance, the Chinese company, is playing a role in hiring personnel for TikTok. Same goes for leasing agreements when they have to rent or lease or buy facilities, right? And you can see ByteDance Incorporated is also a Delaware company. So it gets complicated because there's so many entities with the same name and just in different jurisdictions. But in my mind, as someone who's not on the inside, it seems absolutely ridiculous to say that they would refuse the Chinese Communist Party if they were to ask for certain data. There's no way in my mind. And also, this is a classic one from the Facebook and Zuckerberg playbook, because they say that, yes, technically speaking, people have access to the data if they wanted to, right? They're Chinese-based employees, and if ByteDance is actively involved in hiring and leasing outside of China, then of course there's a lot of employees from ByteDance who also could access the data, right? This is one of the things where you say, yes, of course, a bank could take your money, but this would be a breach of the agreement, a breach of contract, and it would be illegal, right? But in what world would the Chinese government not be able to have people working at that company and then being able to access the data. Of course they can access the data. And why do I say that? The Chinese state-owned enterprises acquisition of 1% of Beijing Dujin Information Service Limited, so this is the other company, the TikTok version in China itself, was necessary for the purpose of obtaining a news license in China. So if you just look at the chain of how these companies are related, you have the Dujin version, you have TikTok, you have the parent company, you have ByteDance, and you basically have the state owning 1% of of one company. This is just an official measure, right? So to me, it's pretty obvious that they have access to the data. So I actually think if you just look at it face value, right? Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, they're all blocked in China, right? But we have a Chinese app in the EU and in the US that is operating. So it wouldn't be too weird to say, hey, let's block TikTok. So I actually would think that it would be a very smart move either to say, hey, you have to sell the company to a US entity and then really have it as being a US or an EU company or whatever. I think this would be a smart move. And in Another smart move would be to just to ban the app everywhere. Make sure it's not available on the App Store, not available on Google, it's completely banned. Because then you would incentivize a competitor to emerge and then doing what TikTok does, but whatever, it's a new app, right? This would be the way to completely cut the ties to a regime that is censoring Western apps in their country, but expect the other countries to take one of their superstar apps, right? Thanks for watching.